All right, we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, for those of you who haven't been in one of the previous meetings, my name is Shane Kiesner. I am a photo booth operator out of Des Moines, Iowa, who um, had this idea of putting these trainings together because um, I learn better in an interactive environment than I do in reading uh, manuals and things. And because of the fact that I didn't think that I was using darkroom booth to its fullest capabilities for the benefits of myself or my clients. Um, individuals like Bill, who is joining us today to lead the session, Terrence, who's going to lead future session, and Wally from Darkroom Booth, who led uh, previous sessions, all agreed to um, come on board and help us to, um, to better understand Darkroom and all the things that it can do. So I'm very appreciative to all of them and to all of, the, all of you who have expressed an interest in learning more about Darkroom Booth along with me. Um, so today we have Bill Barenkamp with us. Bill is the Director of Technical Operations at Imaging Spectrum. I've asked Bill today to talk about printers and everything that goes along with printers and using printers with Darkroom Booth software. Um, so in order to maximize the amount of time we have for the training, I'm just going to turn it over to Bill. Thank you for joining us and leading the session, Bill. Uh, thanks. Hello, everyone. So uh, yeah, just a, just a brief bit of my background. So I, uh, I have a Bachelor of Arts in Photography. I've shot weddings for 38 years. I've had my photo booth for almost 11 years. So Tanya and I uh, built it to add something to our to our weddings, we were already doing events. We already had printers and cameras and lights, and we needed the only thing we needed was software and a touchscreen. So we got all those things, and uh, we had our first photo booth in November of uh, 2009. So this year will be a couple months, be 11 years that we've been doing photo booths. So, um, and I was already working for another company doing similar to what I'm doing with Imaging Spectrum. Um, so anyway, so that's kind of my, my background and everything, but we're going to talk about printers, which I'm very passionate about printing because I'm a photographer and, you know, I used to spend a lot of time in the darkroom printing photos and had brown fingernails and my fingers smelled of fixer and, and everything else. Those were the, the good old days of, of uh, photography. So anyway, but uh, we're going to, I'm going to go to my uh, PowerPoint here and uh, get this started and then we'll uh then we'll uh start the talk here hang on just a second okay uh, i'm going to share a screen and hopefully it'll uh let me start it for you okay Tony, can you see that yep we can see it I can see it. Okay. Okay. So uh, we're going to talk about printers today. So uh, um, a couple of years ago, the uh, PPA, the Professional Photographers of America, had a thing called the print movement. So I just wanted to start off with a print for profitability. So, all right. And uh, now we're going to, oops. Come. Next slide. There it goes. Okay. So first question, what kind of printer do I need? What do I want? And here's some things to consider. How big is the printer? Does it need to fit in a box? Does it need to fit in a printer, a, 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 a photo booth? So obviously um, size is important. Um, weight, you know, uh, we used to have DS40s, which was about six, seven pounds heavier than the 620. And uh, so we definitely like the fact that our 620 is more narrow and lighter. Um, so again, is weight important, especially with like the 410 out, which is under, you know, 10 pounds now. Speed, uh, we like the 620s because it's the fast with the printers. You kind of have eight, eight second printers and you've got uh, 12 second printers. So you kind of have to decide which one do you want. Um, quality, uh, the more expensive the printer, like the 90DW from Mitsubishi, the 620, those are the higher end printers. Someone asked earlier, what's the difference between an RX1 and a 620? Think of the 620 as the Lexus, think of the RX1 and, and the K60 as the Toyota Corolla, you know, both made in the same factory, but there is a difference between the two. Um, cost of the printer and cost of prints. Oddly enough, some people will 
buy the cheapest printer, not realizing in the long run, it's gonna cost them more in print. So you kind of have the $500 printers, you got the $700 printers. Um, and the cost of prints is usually, you know, pretty similar, 11, 12, 13 cents a four by six. Um, print size option, you know, again, most of them do four by six, five by seven, six by eight, two two by sixes. However, the new 410, it does uh, four by sixes and four and a half by eights. So again, some difference, differences in there. Um, media options, uh, just to let you know, DNP is actually, actually started out as a paper manufacturer. That's why, in fact, they, they make a lot of the products for a lot of the companies. Um, they don't make their printers. Those are actually made by Citizen, like the watch company. Um, so that's why they have so many different media options because they make it. Um, and of course, uh, drivers got a call the other day from someone who needed to know what drivers worked with XP. And I told them only the, the, uh, the CS2 from Symphonia printer that didn't work, Mitsubishi M1A. So again, do, do decide if it's, you know, driver issue, you know, drivers, you want something easy, fast, small, um, uh, easier to load and everything. So anyway, something to think about. Um, some sizes, I was talking about different sizes. Um, one of the things that uh, we really like are the square prints. Um, some of the, uh, I've got a list here next, but square prints are kind of cool just because they're different than the four by sixes or the two, two by sixes. And again, some of the manufacturers have it, some don't. Um, this is a list, this is an older list uh, that I pulled off the Imaging Spectrum website. It does not include the M1A, which does. It does not include the, uh, the Height T720. It also does not include the new uh, DNP um, 410, which oddly enough, the prints come out vertically, not horizontally. So it can do, do four by fours and four and a half by four and a half. So just to let you know the print, the square print sizes on something like that. So we, Tanya and I really like pushing the square print, especially the six by sixes. They don't take that much longer to print than a four by six, but they really stand out and it gives us an opportunity to, you know, raise the price for, you know, options for the client. Now they don't have to do it, but uh, we do give it as an option. Um, for those of you that haven't seen it at PBX or some of the other uh, things, DNP has the luxury media, which is a beautiful media. The The metallic is to me better than the silver pearl. The silver pearl is really kind of hard to see the finish on, but the metallic, the, the substrate, the paper itself is actually kind of a pewter silver look. And when, once you put a print on it, especially something with a lot of white space, because then it really makes that silver shine through, it really pops. And it is quite a bit more expensive, but again, you pass that on to the client, let them say, you know, yes or no to it. Um, and it does only come in, in six by eight, uh, except uh, they did recently come out with six by four for the uh, 620. So this is off the, the DNP side to just give you some idea of what the paper looks like. The one on the right is the metallic, the one on the left is the silver pearl. Um, but anyway, just, just some, some stuff from the, from the DNP side, okay? DNP also has perforated media. Again, they're the manufacturer, they can definitely make uh, all kind of different options. So you can do the three two by eights on a six by eight. Uh, there's also a sticker media for the, um, for, this, for the six by eight, the center perf, so that'd be six by eight, so you get uh, two by threes, um, the four by six center perf. So those are, um, those are uh, three by fours and the, the four by six, it has, a, it has a four by four and a two by four. So really good for doing something where you want to, the, the client wants to have like, a, like a, a, a coupon or something on the bottom. So that's a good option. You can do the square print and then a coupon on the bottom. Okay, and that's, that's from the DNP side about how, how it's split up and everything, just to see how it kind of pops out of the printer. Okay. Um, some wireless options. Uh, people have been asking about wireless options. The Airconov has been out for a little while. And of course the new uh, DNP uh, wireless uh, control module. Um, they just came out with an update for the WCM, which seems to have taken care of some of the uh, issues. And I see that I misspelled WCM there <laughs> on the next line. But anyway, that, um, so de definitely some options for wireless. Um, the, the best thing I can recommend is, uh, from tech support is if you can wire your printer with a USB cable, for God's sakes, wire your printer with a USB cable. 
is when you're wireless, whether it's camera or printer or whatever, it just adds another possible issue you could have. And then you got to stop what you're doing and fix it. It's, and it may work great at home. And then you get to the location and there's other wireless there and it could cause problems. It, it just, just to bear that in mind. And I understand, you know, that people with iPads, they don't have much of a, an option, but uh, you know, just bear that in mind. Okay. Um, some troubleshooting things. And I'm, I'm really big on the troubleshooting. <laughs> so um, the most important thing that I, that I tell people all the time is no die sub printer ever is supposed to be transported with, with paper and ribbon and media in the printer and without dumping the shards. Um, just, just don't do it. I can't, can't recommend, I can't stress that enough. Um, and I'll, I'll say more why later. Um, broken ribbons and jammed paper. Uh, take ribbons back together if they snap. It's not a big deal. Just roll it onto the to the used portion. Carefully remove paper jams. You may have to cut something that's jammed, pull it out from opposite angles. Again, not a big deal. You know, it it can break the internal mechanisms of the printer, but it usually doesn't. It usually just jams it and can be taken back out. Um, ports. You know, plug your printer into the same port on your computer every time because if you're using darkroom drivers it doesn't really matter it can go find it wherever it is but if you are using windows driver make sure you always plug it into the same port that way your computer doesn't make another copy because again if you have if you're using like the it printer and you usually use the first port and you have it set for the first port go to a vit plug it into the second port you will have to go back in and not only set it if you're using two two by sixes, but also point to it also. So do, do bear that in mind. Um, always test print. If you're loading a driver or doing something or, or if you've had an issue, test print from the, uh, from the driver. There's an option in the driver to test print. Obviously, if you're using a built-in driver, that doesn't help. But test print from the driver, not from software. Because if it doesn't work from the software, then you, got, then you don't know if it's the software or the driver or the printer. So you have three options that could go wrong. Um, run, uh, run printer driver before plugging in the printer. When you get a new printer, run the driver first before you plug in the printer. And I wish the manufacturers would just stop putting the CDs into the boxes because most computers now don't even have CD drives. Plus by the time you get it, it may be an old driver. So Imaging Spectrum has links to all of the driver pages for all the printers. So best thing to do, get a new printer, go to our page, find the link, download the newest one. That way you know you have it. Um, so uh, anyway, um, a lot of questions about uh, the, my print doesn't match my monitor. And my first question is, is, you know, do you, do you color calibrate your monitor? And I usually tell them, you know, what makes you think your $500 printer is not more accurate than your $100 monitor? So do, do bear those kind of things in mind and we'll go over that a little bit later. All right, hang on just a second. There we go, okay. And, uh, oh, there we go. So just to let you know about transport, uh, transporting your printer, there is a lot more paper than there is ribbon. And the reason being is every time you load paper into the printer, it does those alignment sheets. And the manufacturers expect you to transport it without the media in. So every time you get to location, you're gonna load it and it's gonna spit out those alignment sheets. So that's why it's always on there. The ribbon is exact, by the way. And uh, so do, uh, you know, do take it out and dump the shards. Cause if you get shards in the cutter, you'll either just jam your cutter or you'll break your cutter. Um, and the reason being is the when the paper is wound into the machine, if you transport it with paper in there, it can knock out the sensor. Because you know, with uh, with the printers, you know, some either go beep beep beep, or some light up when you get get it in far enough. You'll break that sensor, and you won't be able to load paper again. That's something that can happen. You transport uh, media or paper in the machine. Um, the ribbon, when it's in there, especially the RX one, because it's not in a any kind of carriage, it bangs into the print head. It can either damage the print head or the print head frame, and you'll get uh, paper jams and other issues. So again, just can't stress it enough. Don't transport it with uh, with media in it. 
Okay. I will uh, jump in here really quickly and tell you that um, one of the first um, events that I did, not like one of the first, but when I was in the back in the beginning, I did not um, heed that warning about not transporting your printer with the paper and the ink in it. And I went to an event and there were shards all up in the printer. And I could not for the life of me figure out what was wrong with the printer. And I ended up having to do a whole event without printing anything, printing them afterwards, doing the album for the customer, sending them the album afterwards and sending them all of the individual prints to distribute to the people that were at their New Year's Eve party. It was a wholly embarrassing um, moment for me because I could not fix the problem for the customer. Luckily, the customer was incredibly, incredibly understanding, but it is horrible to have that happen to you. And it's kind of a nightmare to go back in and pull all the shards out, find them all, pull them out. Um, so don't do it. Don't transport your printers with the paper and the ink in them. <laughs> same, same exact thing happened to me, and Bill sold yeah. me so the last lot. print um, for that. Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna say that. Um, so one of the things that I that I see a lot that I hear a lot is, well, I have it in a good case, so it's fine. The problem is the case only protects your printer from being dropped. It does not prevent the shaking and the vibrations of the vehicle. That's what causes the damage. So anyway, so someone was just debating me over the weekend about it. I'm like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> your, your, your case only protects it from being dropped. By the way, for those of you with R RX1s, the first time you open your printer, this little foam pad falls out. It does say required for transportation. And you are supposed to put that back in after you take the ribbon and the paper out. I have known people that, oh, I'll leave the paper and ribbon in and leave and put the pad in. The problem is when you get to location, you're, when you turn on your printer, it'll show ready. It does not know that pad's in there. And the first time you do it, that, that, um, that print head will melt that pad onto the print head. I've known it hap of it happening twice. So make sure you take your paper and ribbon out, then put the pad in with the RX-1. And just to let you know, the RX-1 is the number one printer in the photo booth industry. It's used more than any other printer. So, okay. Um, breaking ribbons and jams. I talked about a little bit earlier, just some things that can cause it. Um, bad power causing the motors in the printers to run at different speeds. You have a take up and a supply um, motor that pull and push the, the ribbon. And again, if you have bad power, it'll cause this to run at different speeds and it can snap the ribbon. Uh, bad media can also cause, uh, you know, paper breaking ribbons or jams. And then, of course, a printer issue. You have a mechanical issue with your printer. Um, of course, frequent causes transporting the printer with the media, with the RX window foam pad, not dumping out shards. That's, that becomes a printer issue. Because just to let you know, if you get one of those shards in the cutter and you cut, it can, it can either, it can break the cutter. So, or it gets the shard stuck in the cutter and then you have to take the front of the printer off um, to, get the, to get the shard out. Um, Another thing that causes the, the jams, egg-shaped paper due to transport. If you've ever pulled out a roll of paper and you've looked in the middle, instead of being perfectly round, it's kind of egg-shaped. And that's because it, it got beat up in, in transport. Not necessarily you transporting it, but UPS and FedEx bringing it to you. And egg-shaped media is not a big deal. You just push it back into round. Or once you put the spools on, it usually does it. But you do have to kind of make sure that it's smooth because if it sticks off sticks up on one part of the spool when it spins around it can actually hit the top of the printer and it'll just kind of stop doesn't really damage the printer or anything <laughs> my wife's mocking me because i'm talking with my hands um but anyway so uh do uh do make sure that if you do have egg-shaped media just squeeze it back in and if you have to you may have to take 10 feet of paper off or something to to make it fit on there correctly again not a big deal okay um just some basic, uh, some basic issues. Have a major issue, you know, this is, especially with Windows, just shut everything down, including the cameras and the printers. And by the way, when you turn on your cameras and printers first, because when you start up your computer, it does go looking for all those things, then launch your software. So do it, do it in that order. Um, have, have backup equipment to mean, you know, I've always had two printers at every event. 
uh, two cameras, lights, you know, and usually enough cables to start my own store. So that's, uh, that's the next thing. Your cables are your weakest link, have plenty of them. And my advice is buy, you know, buy three $6 cables instead of one $20 cable, because there's just not that much difference in an expensive cable. It may have, you know, fake gold tips on the end, but it doesn't really help the, uh, the, the it doesn't really help anything with the, with the cable by, by a bunch of them. So that's a much better option. Just to let you know, USB cables can go about 15 feet before it starts losing the signal. You can buy repeaters that'll push that signal up to about 80 feet. So do, do uh, know that if you need to go further than just a couple of feet. Um, the UPS and surge protectors are excellent investments. The UPS is an uninterruptible power supply, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But basically, it, it, if you're in a location that may have bad power, what the UPS does, it has, literally has a battery in there. So if all your power goes out, you can't really run off of it, but it gives you enough time to turn all your equipment off safely before you have a problem. So um, do, do think of a UPS, and you need about a $100 one. There's $30 ones, and they don't usually have enough power to run a computer and especially a printer. So get one that's about 100 bucks, and they're, they're about the size of a toaster, so, um, and, and get about $100. Um, a surge protector, you should have a surge protector no matter what. We have a very small one inside our booth, um, so just in case there's a spike, you know, it doesn't, doesn't fry the equipment. The surge protectors aren't, aren't that expensive. So I um, talked about this a little bit earlier. Always plug your printer into the same port every time. Mark if you need be. Um, you know, just say, you know, printer, camera, mouse, whatever you need to do. Um, another thing to always remember is if you get a non-powered hub to plug in a bunch of peripherals, especially your printer and your camera, even though your printer and your camera are powered, the signal doesn't get any boost of power from that. So if you're using a USB hub and have a bunch of stuff plugged into it, you may not have enough power for it to see all those, all those cables and all those devices. So make sure you have a, US, a powered hub and power just means it plugs into AC. They're about 30, 35 bucks for a decent one. Okay, um, I mentioned this earlier, uh, when your printer will not print, test print from the driver first, not not from the software because again it just adds one more possible possible thing that could go wrong all right so i will also second the powered usb hub um, because i have had issues with that as well where i had um, in addition to the things that i normally had plugged into the usb hub i added a second monitor to do a slideshow on and that alone did not or used up the power from the hub and did not allow my printer to work. And when I unplugged the, in a non, in a non powered USB hub, when I unplugged the second monitor, then magically the printer would work. So I have been since invested in all powered USB hubs, which makes my life again, much, you know, better off, makes things run more smoothly. So I feel like I'm the poster child for like everything that could go wrong with your photo booth. So um, if it has, I've probably experienced it. Yeah, and, and uh, we're, we're kind of lucky. Our, our Acer has four ports on it. So we've got plenty of ports for everything. However, you know, if you're using, um, if you're using a, um, uh, I can't believe I can't think of what it's called, the, uh, the pads. Surface oh, Pro. Surface Pro. Uh, yeah, make sure, yeah, again, those are the things that you really need a, a powered hub for. So anyway, so some printer issues. One of my first questions to people is, did it, when you loaded the paper and ribbon, did it spit out the alignment sheets? Because if it doesn't, if you load paper and ribbon and it doesn't spit out alignment sheets, you can almost guarantee that some sort of mechanical problem, just, just to kind of let you know. Um, and also, you know, can you do a test print from the driver? Because again, if it test prints from the driver and it's not test printing from software, it's probably just need to, you know, repoint to the printer in the software. Um, we kind of talked about this earlier, plug the port, uh, plug the printer into the same port every time, use a powered hub. Um, does the printer show up in devices and printers? And I have a screenshot in a second that I'm gonna talk about what I'm, or show you what I'm talking about, just to make sure everyone knows what to look for. 
Um, of course, is it copy one and copy two if you plug it into a different port? It becomes copy one. Your software, if it's looking for the first one, doesn't know there's a second one. And yes, I'm talking with my hands again. So <laughs> and just to let you know, I am occasionally have a tendency to do interpretive dances. So, <laughs> so not really. All right, here we go. Okay, so this is, this is a screenshot of devices and printers in Windows. And uh, just to let you know, it's not as easy to find devices and printers as it used to be. It's, um, it's in control panel, so you may have to do a search for control panel. Devices and printers is different than the new printers and scanners that's in, the, that's in Windows 10. This is actually a better one to be able to find stuff. And next week when I go over cameras, I'm going to be showing what it shows above it because it'll show the camera on the first part of it, and the second part is printers, and the third part is unspecified. So if you look here, you can, and the, the very first one, that's, that's, what the, uh, that's what it looks like with the, with the WCM, so don't pay any attention to that, but I did have a 620 plugged in, and you can see it's dark, where the copy one, copy two, copy three are light, as is the 410. And that's the difference between a printer that's plugged in and so if it's plugged in and it's being seen by the driver, it'll look dark. If it's not being seen, it'll be light gray. That's usually a cable issue or a port issue or just replug it in. And just to let you know, under unspecified, where it says photo printer, that is what a printer will do when you don't have a driver for it. So even if you're doing, even if you're using a 620 in darkroom, and you don't have the driver loaded in your, on your computer, it'll still show up as photo printer on the bottom. So again, does your computer see the printer? And that's why I wanted to show you this, just to kind of let you know what to look for. And again, this is devices and printers in the control panel. So um, I, actually have, I actually have one of these on my desktop to click on it and go to it quickly if I need to. So do use devices and printers, it's better than the new one. Okay, lines in your prints. Okay, frequent causes, bad media, try other media. I did have someone last week that they were getting lines in their prints. And I said, well, it's a couple of different things. Try a different role of media. Sure enough, they put in another role of, of and when I say media, change paper and ribbon. Don't just, don't just try a new ribbon. But what she did is she unrolled the ribbon and there was a manufacturing, well, the, the ribbon was kind of folded over on itself on the ribbon and uh so and of course we sent out a call tag to to, to get that taken care of and i can't stress this enough have more than one roll of paper and ribbon with you in fact we always have one open one and two unopened ones just in case we run out of the of the uh, open one and we grab one of the uh, un uh the unused ones and it's bad so again that's just what we do so you can't have too much media, just to let you know. And you can't have too many cables. Um, so a scratch uh, or dirt on the roller or the head, clean with an alcohol swab, and I'm gonna show that more later. Um, a bad head, uh, send the manufacturer for repair. So, the, and they're, you know, if they're under warranty, especially like the DMPs and Mitsubishis, they come with a three-year warranty, it's worth getting them fixed. That's what the warranties are for. Okay, so I talked about cleaning the print head. So this is this is off our website. So the photo is kind of funky. But uh, when you buy a 620 printer um, or well, the old DS40s, they came with a print kit, a cleaning kit like this. It does not come with the RX1. They're only five bucks. So next time you order paper and ribbon from Imaging Spectrum, you can order one of these. Um, you can, there's a little pin. It kind of looks like a marker, and the the little gray pad is actually pink now. And then it has these little chemical pads too. And that's what you use to clean your heads. And speaking of heads, this is what a print head looks like. And I think this is a DS40. Um, Cause I already had this photo, but you can see where the arrows are pointing to that little black strip along there is actually your print head. And that's what you'd clean with an alcohol pad. And you, and you can use one like the one you give shots with. You can use one of those, although they do have lint on it, so you have to be careful. Um, but um, anything that has true pure alcohol on it, you can use those to clean the print head first. If that doesn't do it, make sure you have a cleaning kit to do it. And basically what you do is you rub that, that marker across the head. It softens it up in that little pink pad. Then you go over and it's got a little bit of a little bit of abrasive on it. So it'll clean the head. So always try that, then contact 
you know, the manufacturer. And by the way, DNP cleaning kit works with all printers, Mitsubishi, HiT, Brava, yeah, who am I guessing? Symphonia, it works with all of them. So don't think that it's DNP specific, it's not. Okay, so I think the problem with this photo is too much magenta. So for those of y'all that know this movie, you'll understand this. So, okay, so ICC is the, uh, you know, whenever, whenever someone asks about bad color, my first question is, you know, well, my first question usually is, how's the camera, how the photos look? And then, you know, do you have the correct ICC profile set? And just, just to let you know that ICC stands for International uh, Color Consortium. So um, it's not quite a gang, but it's close. Um, so just, just to let you know what an what a ICC is, all printers have them. They usually get installed when you install the driver. Um, so just, just to let you know that, that they're there. And I'll show you how to load it if you don't get it. Um, so just to let you know if your colors are off, it's if you have been printing okay and suddenly your colors go off, it's probably your white balance on your camera, especially if you have it set on automatic. And I'll go over that more next week, but did want to let you know that there is, there is white balance on the camera and then ICC on the printer. So two different things you need to make sure are set correctly to get the best uh, color. And again, like I mentioned earlier, don't always trust your monitor. It may or may not be right. The print's what you're putting in your client's hand. Make sure you do a test print before you open to see if everything's correct. Okay, so to, um, to install an ICC profile, I have a blog post on how to load these. These are for the DS40, and this is even an old RX1 one, but it still works be best with the RX1 HS and the DS80, which is the eight by 10. But once you download an ICC profile, all you have to do is right click on it and the very first thing says install profile and it will install it into your Windows operating system where it needs to be. And I'll show you where it pops up later, but just to let you know how easy it is to, uh, to uh, uh, install an ICC profile. And just to let you know, again, the link on, our, on the Imaging Spectrum page to drivers and software will take you exactly where you need to go um, to find this on any of the manufacturer's pages. Okay, now this is, um, this is inside the driver. So this is where you would set, and, th and this is the 620 driver that's built into Darkroom. So when you click twice on it, it'll open it up and you'll have set up, that's the default print size is color. Then if you'll notice on the bottom, it says color profile, click on use custom profile, and then you click browse, and this is what it'll show you. So if you'll notice, these are all the ICC profiles um, I have on my computer, and I just selected the 620. And then once you select that, then it'll pop up like it did on, on the screen before. Um, it also has the DS40, DX100, the 410, the RX1. So I have a bunch of ICC profiles on here because I've used a bunch of printers on, on this computer. So anyway, so just, just to let you know how to install it, how to point to it, and how to select it. So anyway, so that's uh, that's so before you Before you move forward, I have two questions. Okay. Um, of my own. Um, first, are there ICC color profiles on the imaging spectrum page for each printer that there is a driver for, a darkroom booth driver for? The ICC profiles are not on our site, just the links to the, to the manufacturer's website to get it. Okay, but are there links to those websites for every printer that there is a driver for in darkroom booth? Yes, both. So okay. it's like the Mitsubishi, high T. Uh, like I have a Seat Brava. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. The Bra um, I don't remember on the Chiat Brava. I think that takes you, I think when you click on that, it takes you it, it just downloads it because it's okay. where the importer or where the importer for that printer. So I'm pretty sure when you click on it, it just downloads it. Okay. Yeah. And then my second question has to do with if you went back a slide, if you go back a slide in your thing there. Mm -hmm. So right there. Um, one of the things that I found that I had to change in order to get the best prints for the best prints on my Chiat Brava were, was the gamma. Mm -hmm. 
and that I had to actually go and do a Google search for the proper gamma setting for my printer in order to get the best skin tones mm -hmm. primarily in my in my prints um, is that something that typically you have to change in the driver settings in darkroom booth is the gamma that's an excellent question um, and and just to let everyone know this is where you change color um, and contrast and gamma. And contrast and gamma are, are similar, but there is a, a slight difference between the two of them. But, you know, and just to let you know, red, um, red and cyan, so if they're two, you know, and, and all of these are complementary, you know, to the RGB, cyan, magenta, yellow, so green and green and uh, magenta, blue and yellow. So just to let you know that how those, how those work out. Um, and sometimes, and every now and again, someone, we load the correct ICC and the color is still off. So I send them here to slide it back and forth to get the color correct. Um, it has been probably two years and we don't have any more Bravas even in the office for support because we sold it. Um, so it's been a while since I've looked at one, but I don't remember having to always go in and set something here to make it work correct. I don't remember having to do that. It doesn't mean you didn't have to. I just don't remember always having to do it. Right. I've only, I've only, I mean, I've changed it once. It's the only printer that I use. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, stays on that setting. And so it's worked, you know, for mm -hmm. that. Um, so I guess my next question that comes up too is, and sorry to monopolize questions, but so Canon cameras typically tend to shoot a little bit more red right are known to shoot with a little bit more of a red reddish hue than like say a nikon camera is is that not is that a correct well statement? since i shoot with nikon <laughs> um I, yeah i mean i i think you will probably find that they probably are known to be a little bit red um but you know again that's pretty easy to fix you know you can do a you know you may and I'll talk about this more next week with Cam. Okay, we'll, we'll just, let's just skip over that then. And we okay, can yeah, remind me next week, although I will yeah. be talking about that next week as far as what different options to set your white balance on, yep. on your camera, so. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right, we talked about this. So this is how to set the ICC in darkroom with the Windows driver. So just to let you, and this is actually, in devices and printers that I've gone in to set the set and I've kind of done this screenshot where you can kind of see everything. So when you double click on the 620, comes up here, go to printer, go down to properties, properties, go to the color tab, color management, it brings you right here to the uh, to devices, click on profiles and it's down here. I know that was a lot of da 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 da. But um, and I'm not sure if, and I just did this screenshot. I don't know if this appears anywhere but uh, if anyone wants it, just send me an email and I'll, I'll send it to you. But anyway, this is where to find, how, where to set ICC profiles in a Windows driver. So, yeah, and as far as, yeah, there was a question about gamma settings. Do you recommend to adjust? I don't, I, I don't usually change the contrast in the gamma. I usually get it in camera and then setting the ICC profile. The best thing I can do is, and, and anytime you're testing something, don't, don't go up one or two, go up five or 10, and then do one on one end of the scale, one on the other end of the scale, and then you'll know which direction you need to go to get it right. And by the way, have a Sharpie marker and write on the back when it comes out of the printer, which is which, because sure enough, you'll keep those photos to look at them later and you'll go, I don't know which one was which. So always mark your, your, your test prints if you're doing adjustments, you know, and again, do a lot, don't just do one or two. Do you like five or 10 so it really shows? You can really see the difference. Okay. All right. Let's keep going here. I know we don't have a ton of time. Um, printer bleed. And, and just to let you know, someone was asking this question the other day about the, uh, and this is the built in driver, the 620 built in driver in darkroom. If you'll leave this multi cut checked on, it'll always either cut or not cut, depending on whether you have it set for four by six or two two by sixes. Darkroom's smart enough 
to know which one it is. So you don't have to go back and forth and change this. Um, if you look a little bit lower, it tells you what printer it is. The second number, the 1.52, that's the firmware, and that is the current firmware for the 620. Next is the serial number. Next is the media, 4x6, 5x7, 6x8. The remaining, that's a, that's a driver issue. It says minus 49, but it's not. It's actually like plus 49. Um, and then the lifetime prints on there. So, uh, but more importantly, if you look up here where it says bleed, there's, in fact, someone just posted on the darkroom page again today, um, and I'm going to write back to her, but if you have a white line, on, you know, think of the four by six when it comes out of the printer, and I'm always talking, and when someone always, you know, someone says when there's a problem, and they'll say, well, it's, it's you know, it's along the, it's along the top. Well, top is relative, depending on which way you turn the, turn the print, so I always say, is the line running four inches or six inches? Because that's how I kind of know which direction it's coming. And if it's along, if it's four inches, if the white line is four inches long, I know they need to up the bleed or reload the paper, both. Um, so anyway, that, that's where bleed is. Um, and that's true with any of the built-in drivers. The non-built-in drivers, I should have looked, I don't remember offhand. I think it has a similar setting in darkroom. I'm not sure if it's called bleed though, but anyway, just to show you the built-in drivers there. And just to let you know, the Chia, Mitsubishi, and DNP all have built-in drivers in darkroom. Okay. Um, there's been an occasional question about, you know, generators and things like that. Um, the, the Honda EU 2200i inverter generator, that's one of the best ones that I know of. Someone, someone else posted one that seems to be pretty good, and I can't I can't remember what store it comes from. It's a house brand of one, some store. Clay, do you remember what that is? Clay must have gone to sleep. Someone poke him with a stick. Um, anyway, but there's some other ones. And they're about $1,000 new, but you can usually rent them for about 100 bucks for, uh, for like a day or, you know, a weekend or something. So if you need a generator, look for stores that rent things. They may have those for rent. Um, even Home Depot may have them. So anyway. Um, always have plenty of gas. Tanya and I did an event several years ago and we were not responsible for the generator. They were, it was a one on a trailer because we had three systems and six printers and I'll be damned if they didn't forget to put gas in it. So it ran out. Now it wasn't our responsibility. So it wasn't our fault. And we had UPS battery backups on all the systems. We were actually able to turn everything off safely. And, and by the way, if you ever have a problem with your printer and you've got a bunch of things in the queue, don't turn off the printer to stop printing. Just unplug the USB from the back of the printer because then the next print can't be sent to it. Just FYI on how you stop your printer from printing. Just unplug the USB, not the power. Um, but anyway, so I talked a little bit earlier about uh, UPS, uh, uninterruptible power supplies or battery backups. They're, they're the same things. But anyway, um, we like the APC and the, uh, the cyber power. The good ones are about 100 bucks. The cheap ones, about 30 bucks. They don't have enough battery power to, to safely get it to you to turn it off. So, okay. Um, just some, some overview. Talked about this earlier. Turn on your camera and printer before you start the software. Um, why did I run out of ribbon before paper? Um, it's because your paper's got more than the ribbon. And also, teach your employees, if you're not doing it, and teach yourself, when you run out of ribbon, just replace both. You can't do any, unless you're using metallic paper. When, once you run out of, paper, of ribbon, there's nothing you can do with that extra paper. Just throw it away. I've had people tell me, well, I saved it because of recycling. Well. It's really a, most of it's polyester based paper. It really doesn't recycle. So just, just throw it away. Um, have backup cables. They are the weakest link. Um, again, buy three $6 cables instead of one $20 cable. The, the gold ends just don't, don't help anything. Um, it, it, all your equipment or mechanic, mechanical electronic devices, they will go out. Um, there's just no question, you know, even Rolls Royce builds a limit every now and again. So don't think, well, I bought the best one. Nah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. They, they're, they, they can go out at will. Um, and, and saying your system, my other one is, well, it worked last week. And I always tell people, well, that's like saying my car worked, you know, last night when I pulled it in the garage, it won't start this morning. 
And uh, so that, uh, that's a favorite thing to say. Um, budget for backups. Refunding a gig is usually about the same price as a, um, as a piece of equipment, printer, camera, computer. So again, we always take backups to everything, uh, you know, double, everything's got a backup, um, at least one. So just, just because, you know, I just don't, I just don't want to have to look my client in the face and say, you're SOL. So, all right. So that's, uh, that's my talk. So we're ready for questions or, you know, whatever people might have. So what questions do people have? There aren't really any in the uh, chat box that haven't already been addressed or that I haven't asked for myself already. Um, so you said, so I'll just throw one out there. You said that um, the RX-1 is the most used printer in the, in the business. Um, do you have an opinion as to why that's the most frequently used in the business? Is it the variety of, of like sizes of prints that it can produce? Is it the quality of the printer, the, you know, longevity of it, or? I think it's, I think it's all, you know, so just to let you know a little bit of history of the number one printer for a while, it was the CX-1 from Sony. I mean, it was just hands down the most used printer in the photo booth. And then it became the R1 and then now the R20HS. Um, I think price, reliability, DNP, you know, really good company, uh, you know, availability, um, tech support, three-year warranty, you know, I'm, I'm not sure which one of those, because it was really the photo booth builders that led to it. They were really the ones buying them to include with their systems. And I, I don't know, you know, I never really asked them why. But that's really kind of what led to that is so many of the booth builders were, were including it when they bought, when someone bought a booth. So mm -hmm. yeah, good question. But no, no real good answer. So. Right. Anyone else? Come on. I, I would have talked longer, but I thought it, I, I tried to leave 15 minutes at the end. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Clay, you got a question. Are you asleep? Oh, Tanya just asked, what do I use on my mustache? Well, mustache wax, of course. <laughs> and just interesting enough, so I went to my barber when I first did this, and I said, give me your best stuff. And he gives me this, you know, I buy this $20 jar. And it's not as good as the little $5 tube from Sally's Beauty Supply, so just let you know. Did that... Did the, um, I was just trying to think of things that I've seen. Okay, so Armando asked, can you request yes. sample prints of the metallic Lux paper? Yes, we can. Uh, the, the only thing that's tricky right now is we're not, we're not all there. So it may take a little longer to, to get you some. I just, I just sent one to Clay uh, like a week or two ago, with he and his daughter on it, so. I think Clay was trying to show that at one point on his video feed. Um, oh, Clay. Uh, the, the only unfortunate thing, Clay, is that there's a reflection from your computer screen that's showing on the print, so it's kind of hard to uh, to see the quality of the Now it has no print, light. But, um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, so just put I it can't really tell, it, but it's, yeah. There we go. Yeah, that's, there it is. I'm trying to get it away. Yeah, the girl is cute, but the other person in the photo has subject failure. <laughs> um, can you pull your your uh, your PowerPoint back up again and go towards the end? The one thing that I was thinking about, and I'm sure that probably most of the people that are on this already know this, but I mean, I've seen people in like the different groups before asking, you know, questions about, you know, basically where do you find your printer? Where do you find your printer counts? You know, like in darkroom booths. So I just wanted to maybe, maybe we can just reemphasize that since I know people are going to watch this, the recording of it that, you know, may not be on here, you know, 
on the training today, but you know, like how you go into global settings, you know, where you find your, you know, your printer in darkroom booth. We only discover that in uh, the first week. Yeah, I did yeah. not. I did not do a screenshot where to find it in the okay. dark room. I, I couldn't remember if it showed on the one on the one screen or not. So anyway, well, it doesn't like, show Clay, where to find it in dark room. Just what once you open it, it shows it. Um, yeah, and like Clay said, Wally covered that as well in the the first week. But yeah, but but Wally may not have done it right. No, <laughs> so this is so. Uh, can y'all see this? Yeah. Okay, so this is where in, in darkroom, uh, yeah, it, this is the in the darkroom driver. And this is true with the Mitsubishi and the Brava and the DNP because the driver's built in. So it does show the lifetime, you know, usage right there on the head. So 4,936. Uh, 4, and uh, most, uh, it's been a while since I've looked at the Symphony or the High T. I'm a I'm almost a hundred percent sure the High T has that option in their driver. I don't remember about the Symphony or not, even though I used to own a a, a 2145. It's been a long time, so I don't remember. But I but I'm pretty sure both of those drivers have the have the print count in there and all the other information you might need. Yeah, it's. It's useful to be able to know to go to global settings to find the printer because like you said, if your printer isn't being recognized, it's not gonna show up in the global settings. I mean, that's one place that you can look to see if it's even recognizing your printer. And then I've found when I've had some issues with printers before and just need to, you know, like, you know, unplug them and plug them back in again that, mm -hmm. you know, the part at the bottom where it shows the media size and the remaining prints and the lifetime prints and stuff, there are times where it'll show an error message there, mm -hmm. you know, and then that, you know, helps me, you know, identify that, you know, there's something beyond the fact that it's just not plugged in right or whatever. And maybe I just need to restart it or, you know, whatever, yeah. um, you know, so places where people can look to find additional information that can help them to assess what may be the problem with their printer or, you know, the prints. Um, just because again, I see it come up in the, in the groups from time to time as to where do I find this information? Yeah. Good point. So, Someone called me yesterday looking for a print head for their DS 40, uh, not a print head. They were looking for the, uh, they, they had broken their, their USB port on the back of their DS 40. And I will tell you that is possible to do if you transport your printer with the, with the cable plugged into it, because all it takes is a little bit of whack and it'll, it, cause there's you know, if you've ever looked at the USB port, it kind of looks like a house, but it has a, it, it has a post in the middle. Okay. And it's real easy to break that post off. And if you do, it, it's not going to work. And most, most of the, uh, most of those ports are soldered onto the motherboard and the manufacturers don't like to replace those on the motherboard. They'll replace the whole motherboard. So just, <laughs> and that's not a, that's not an, an inexpensive thing to do. And also just to let you know, if you break that center post, you'll void the warranty because they'll, they'll know that that didn't just fail. It happened because someone whacked the, the cable. So do, do unplug them. So. And you mentioned briefly earlier, Bill, about the update that was made to the WCM um, for the DMP, the wireless control module for the mm -hmm. DMP. Mm -hmm. um, and it looked like when that first came out, there were a number of issues that people were having with getting it to work properly. Mm -hmm. Now that they've corrected that, um, you know, in the newest update, um, is that a fairly simple process to use that to do wireless printing? I've not tried to do wireless printing at all. So yeah, from what I found, yeah, it seems to be pretty, pretty simple to use again you know the first time you set it up takes a little while and then the next time you use it it seems to go looking for it pretty easily now i've not used it at a gig and i've not used it also while i'm emailing someone just called about two hours ago asking first of all they're on an ipad which i don't use ipads and second of all they're wondering about uploading you know email at the same time again i don't do that with an ipad so i did not know how to answer their question so again i I know how to make it work. I don't necessarily know how to make it 
work well at an event because I just haven't done it yet. Um, next event we do, I may try to do wireless just to do it, uh, but I will have a cable, you know, on standby just in case. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, but yeah, I, I wish, and I and I hope to convince DNP next time they do something like this to send a few modules out to let people beat them up and test right. them and then be able to report back and make those changes before they release it. So mm -hmm. as it just, you know, again, when you're a, when you're a geek working for a company, you, you have your kind of tunnel vision. In fact, they were shocked when, after they released it, when, when they were like, well, you know, we're telling the pr problems and they didn't even, they didn't even think about people using these for, for photo booths. And I'm like, who the hell do you think was going to buy this thing? <laughs> so, uh -huh. You know, so again, they were a little bit short. And of course, this year was tough. I mean, they had all kind of plans at PBX to release it. And then, of course, COVID hit. So right. there was lots of issues along the way. So. Mm -hmm. um, so Armando had a question about the Prince not cutting properly and cutting off his logo and adjusting the bleed setting. And I think from his question, it asked, when you like initially open up darkroom booth for the first time, is the bleed going to be set to zero and then you adjust accordingly or is the bleed typically set at something already, you know, in the, in the print settings for the printer? Armando, are you referring to You cut out a little bit there, Bill, so I'm not sure. So your there is a problem bleed still. It, well, oh. Armando, are you asking about Windows or iPad? Surface okay. Pro. Okay, good. Um, yeah, as far as I know, I think the default bleed from the driver is, is, is 16. I don't think I've gone in and changed that, and I, I can't click Restore Defaults, but I think that is the yeah. default on the 620 is 16. But if it's not, just go up or down. So. Yeah, it, it is 16. So another question, I guess, Bill, and you kind of referenced this earlier. So one of the things that I found somewhat confusing when I've been trying to adjust prints, I mostly do two by sixes. Uh -huh. So a lot of times the first print will come out perfect and the second print will come out a little bit off, right? And so I go to adjust those and it says fine adjust horizontal and fine adjust vertical. And I, so I use the Brava and I use four by six media and I do two by six prints primarily. Horizontal and vertical are relative, are different than I think most people think of them as because it's based on how the paper comes through the printer, not how the print comes out when you're looking at it. Yeah, because- So it vertical <laughs> is horizontal and horizontal is vertical. Yeah. I mean, compared to what you're looking at when you're looking at the print, as to what you're actually adjusting when you adjust those. Yeah, and, and uh, Armando, just to let you know, you'd have, if, you're, if something's being cut off, you either go down on the bleed or you can adjust the horizontal. So that, that's the way you'd fix that to answer the question, so. Well, there, there's also one other way to fix that too, and that's coming from a graphic designer here. In, with all printers, and this is what we do at Photo Booth Graphics, we, at, on all sides, we do a 30 pixel bleed. So we keep a safe area of 30 pixels and nothing goes on the end of that, of that print at all whatsoever. So we keep a little space right between the cut and then where you're gonna put your text. Wait, can I have more than 30 pixel safe zone from you? <laughs> <laughs> well, put, your, put your mask on, Clay. When do you have a mask? <laughs> <laughs> so I have a weird question. Because um, most of this is dealing with dye sublimation printers. I'm interested in the Fuji. Um, how do you transport that? How, how do you tra tra transfer? Transport. Transport, I'm thinking, um, I mean, you take the media out of your dye subs. Is there anything special you have to do with the Fuji? The only thing you can do on the Fuji is back the paper out of the machine. 
Okay. But you have to leave the inks in or they'll bleed. They'll do what? Yeah, empty the shard tray. But yeah, the inks have to stay in because if you pull them out, they'll they'll drain into the into the tank. So. Okay, that's okay. what I was wondering. I, f I didn't realize it had a shard tray too. I should have, but. It's got a okay. giant, ours is in the other room, but it's got a giant shard tray. In fact, just just for, for no good reason other than I was taking the trash out, I dumped it out the other day and uh, it was it was half full. Tanya's going to get it to, to show it to you, but it's, I mean, it's a large tray and it was, it was half full, so. And it does do about four shards every time it prints. So this is the this is the <laughs> tray on a DX100. And again, ours was about up to here. So, wow. um, and, and I have I have seen more than one of these things not get dumped out before transport. And oh my God, are there shards everywhere? So it was messy. So. Cool. Thanks. Uh, you're welcome. Any other questions? All right. Well, we don't have any other questions that have come up, and I hate to cut it off, but I do have obligations after this, and we are at 3.03, so we've, we've kind of come to our hour. Um, so I wanted to thank Bill again very much for um, joining us today and leading the discussion on the printers. Um, Bill will be back again with us next week to talk about um, cameras, camera settings, as he referenced, white balance being a key part of that. Um, and then the week after that, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we have Terrence, who is going to uh, talk about um, event gallery. And then after the week after that, we should have Clay talking about um, graphic design issues. That session is not going to be on a Wednesday. Um, but we will get information out in advance and that it's going to be on a different day of the week to accommodate Clay's schedule. And then um, we have some other topics that Wally and I have discussed um, going into sp some specifics on some issues um, coming up after Clay. And Clay mentioned earlier today to me that it might be a good thing to do um, an entire training on um, the Darkroom Booth iPad um, software as well, which I had been thinking about also. So we'll probably add that in there as well. So continue to look for um, updates on upcoming sessions. Thank you all to those of you who have joined and um, appreciate your support. And I'll get the recording of this up hopefully by the, to the group um, by the end of the day on Friday. So Just real quick, is everybody okay with a Thursday afternoon for my session? Okay. Thursday is good for me. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again very much. Expose you to photography. Thank you, Bill. Have a great day, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thanks for coming. Bye.